stand up and just brag on the Lord uh, tonight. Be a good time to do that right now. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And if you're saved and glad of it, you ain't gonna have this chance always. So right now, somebody will just pop up, pop off. Good time. Go ahead, Brother Terry. Man, brother. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen, brother. Welcome home. Amen, brother. Amen. Isn't that something? I'm just having. Amen, brother Terry. Praise the Lord. I remember they got saved right there. Anybody else? Go ahead, sister. <laughs> That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Brag on the Lord. Go ahead, our big boy. <laughs> Amen. Hey, we did, I wasn't even home today, and I got a text from New Jersey talking about how they enjoyed that little boy singing this morning. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? What a blessing. Anybody else? Right quick. Right quick. Now's your time to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. He sure has. Amen. Tell Frankie, better behave. Wake him up, please. Frankie, wake up. Everybody over there, punch him, roll him around the floor. He is not allowed to sleep during church. Uh, he wants to sleep when we sleep. Anybody else? Right quick. Amen, Miss Donna. Amen. You know that trouble, you go through a lot of trouble in life, it makes you appreciate heaven and what you look, got to look forward to. Anybody else? Right quick. Right quick. Now's your chance. All right. Proverbs chapter 10. I'm just going to give you a lesson tonight. Probably uh, maybe slow down just a tad from what normally I do. And I uh, want to give you a little lesson tonight. And I'll start with Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1, please. And I'm going to talk about uh, raising kids. All the mamas and daddies and then all you that are kids who have a mama and daddy. I guess that gets us all. So here in Proverbs chapter 10, look at verse number one. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. In other words, a man got a wise, smart son Boy, his daddy's so glad and proud of him. But a foolish son, he's going out here getting in trouble all the time, getting arrested, thrown in jail, getting in fights, uh, in the hospital, car wrecks, out of jail, in jail. We all got people in our family like that. Is the heaviness of his mother. Tonight, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, asking a question. Why are families falling apart in this day and time? And why are the juvenile centers full? Rehabs are running over. Can't take no more people. You can't, you call them, they say we're full. You go, you know, if, a, if a teenager gets in trouble, you take them somewhere to get them play. Sorry, we're full. Why is that? There's something wrong with the basic fabric of our society in this country. Something's gone wrong. I, I believe it happened back in the 60s when they ruled God and, and prayer out of our school system and the culture began to change and accept ideas and ways that, that had never been uh, endorsed for our kids before. And because of that, that, that's just the beginning. And it's a long line of, of, of saying, you know, all religions are the same right on down to the time we're living in. New ways of 
discipline children and stuff like that. But I hear what I want to do tonight. I want to just give you some points. And it's going to be a little bit more like teaching than preaching, maybe. So if you want to jot these down, every parent in here tonight, get you a pen or a pencil, get you a little piece of paper, and just write these down. And it might help you a little bit about dealing with your kids. Any perfect parents in here tonight? That's what I thought. Uh, uh, any perfect kids in here tonight? That's what I thought. There's a few perfect people. I heard that one woman say, uh, said, uh, nobody's perfect. And that man said, my wife's first husband was. Uh, them's the only per- perfect people there, people you ain't never met. And did you know, uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, our kids. They're not perfect. We're not perfect. But we want to try to do the best we can. So I'm going to write, I'm going to name you off a little list. And I want you to write these down and go back to them every now and then. Ready? Number one. Number one, be an example of what you want your children to be. Now, that's very simple, very basic. Everybody in here ought to know that. But you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised at the people who say, you do this and you do that and you do this and you do that and you don't do that and you don't do that. But what about you? Don't matter. Don't you worry about me. You do what? That's the attitude a lot of parents have. The old don't do as I do, do as I say do attitude. You will never be an effective parent and a parent that helps your kids worth a hoot unless you are an example of what you want your kids to be. You want your kids to do right? Guess what? You do right. You want your kids not to drink? Guess what? You don't drink. You can't say, don't you drink. Now, I'm old, I can handle this, and I'm smart, and I keep a little in the refrigerator. But if I ever catch you, I've heard people say that. I've heard people say, boy, if I catch you smoking, I'll beat you. I'll whoop you, boy. If I ever. Uh, listen, you, if you tell them not to do it, good night, man. Uh, you got to. It'd be just like if I got up here and I preached to y'all something that I don't do myself. I, if I preach it to you, I ought to do it, right? If a preacher tells you to do it, he ought to do it. And if you tell your kids to do it, you ought to do it. Be an example of what your little gir- uh, girls and boys want you to do. You know how I come uh, a lot of little girls are smart mouth little girls? Because they got a smart mouth mama. That's right. They got a smart mouth griping, fussing uh, mama and they grow up just exactly like her. You know why boys grow up uh, uh, being mean and hateful and overbearing and controlling? Because daddy was like that and they turn out just like him. If you want your boy to turn out right, you do right. You want your boy to pray, you pray. If you want your girl to pray, you pray. If you want your girl to uh, dress right and decent and modest and, and read the Bible and be pure and virtuous, you dress right and pray and read the Bible and be pure and virtuous. If you want your kids to show respect, you show respect. Lord, we meet them on them bus routes. I'm telling you what, good night, people. Uh, we meet on them bus routes. I've told you before, I, I, we walked in the house trailer or something, and there sits uh, this old gal over there, and she's sitting there like that, and got that TV going on, there's a dog over here, cat running across her, uh, like that, and she'll smack you, one of the young ones running through the house, TV on so loud, and you say, uh, hey, <laughs> can we talk to you for a minute? And she's uh, saying, um, turn that down, what is, where's he at? Johnny, come in here and get this young'un. Oh, that, wipe that, take that dish rag and wipe that young'un's nose. The only thing I can't stand is niceness. You know, stuff like that. And, and, and just on and on and on and on and on like that. And you think, good night, what a household. And good Lord, she's in there and got a, got a cigarette that long, you know, and, and dre- wearing clothes that would fit her granddaughter. And, uh, and uh, she's uh, all over the couch. And about that time, one comes in about 15 or 16 like that, and she's just a sassy like that. And I say, Mama, I told him that. And uh, you know what I'm sitting there thinking? All that is is a younger version of that. And that's exactly where she learned it. Listen, you want your kids to do right? You do right. You want your boy not to cuss? Don't you cuss. And clean your dirty mouth up and live right and talk pure. You want your kids, listen, you want your kids to get along with your mate? You and, you and your husband, you and your wife. You know. I mean, if you do argue, you ought to have enough sense not to do it in front of the kids. Surely you've got enough sense. If you have differences and disagreement, never do that in front of the children. Be an example 
of what you want your kids uh, to be. He said one time, there's this man, uh, uh, he's out and he'd go down to the bar about every day and get drunk. And he walked down there years ago and there was a big snowstorm one day and he was sitting down there at the bar drinking and he had a drink fixed here and he had another one, had another one. About that time he felt something like that and it was his little boy sitting right beside him. He said, what are you doing in here? I don't. And he looked at him and he said, Daddy, I followed your footprints in the snow. And that man had to know my son is in a bar because he followed my footsteps. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a son. I mean, I got Ethan, got Frankie. I'm not, but I, have, I have daughters, but I don't want them boys to ever say, I followed Brother Danny to a bar. I don't want them boys to ever say, I followed my daddy, my stepdaddy, my adopted daddy, or whatever I turn out to be. I don't want them to ever say, ever, ever say, I followed my daddy to a casino. I don't want them to say, I followed my daddy into a nightclub. Be an example of what you want your kids to be. Listen, people, you teach more by your example than you do your words. Uh, their kids watch every move you make. They hear it when you talk disrespectful to your husband. They know that you're bossing him around. They ain't dumb. You may just think they are, but if you're a woman and you control that home, them kids know it, and it's a dirty, sorry example. They know, men, if you don't love your wife and honor her and respect respect her and treat her right. They can see it. They can sense it. And I'm telling you, be an example of what you want your kids to be. Or about this one said, oh, she stood up one time in church. She said, I want y'all to pray for me. Uh, and she took head pills, throat pills, back pills, get up pills, stay up pills, go to sleep pills, stay up sleep pills, uh, good mood pills, bad mood pills, get me up, get me down pills. And she said, pray for my son, he's on dope. Uh, you know, uh, if, he, if, if he walks in and your, and your bedroom looks like a, looks like a pharmacy, uh, I, mean, I mean, if you need medicine, that's one thing. But the Lord, there ain't no way some of the people need all the uh, medicine they take. I've heard a lot of people lately getting rid of their medicine and, and getting well. Uh, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not telling you to do that. But I'm telling you, brother, we want our kids to stay off dope. We stay off dope. I know a preacher's wife takes stuff all the time for pain and ain't nothing, nothing wrong with it, such as a drug addict. Don't get quiet on me. Be an example of what you want your kids to be. Number two, number two, ready? Discipline must be balanced with love. Discipline must be balanced with love. I, I raised three daughters, uh, two of them's here tonight. I mean, y'all know my girls. They're not perfect, and I ain't either. But buddy, I learned some stuff. Let me tell you. Good night. Did I ever learn some stuff? I learned discipline must be balanced with love. What does that mean? That means you discipline a child, but you have to love them the whole time. Discipline without love is dangerous. Discipline without love is dangerous. All of us have had that old uncle or somebody in our family who is just a mean old uh, dictator tyrant in the home that slapped the kids and cussed them and, and kicked them around and come in drunk and everybody and ruled with an iron fist. And, and you know, you raise up kids in an environment like that, you're gonna raise a rebel. You're gonna raise a, a killer. You're gonna raise a murderer in a home. All you do is be mean to a kid and talk mean to them and hit them and knock them around. That is not biblical discipline. Discipline must be balanced with love. As a matter of fact, the Bible said, provoke not your children to wrath lest they be discouraged. Discipline is something you do for a child, not to a child. Did you hear me? Discipline is not something you do to a child. It's something you do for them. It ain't taking out your frustrating on them. It is doing it for their benefit to teach them to respect God, to respect you. And you messed up people. A lot of messed up people come from home where they had an overbearing parent who was mean to them. You know, I ain't, I ain't watched. I don't even remember the last time I've watched a movie. And I'm not saying that like I'm something special. I just don't. I'm not interested in them. No movie. None. I ain't watched a movie and. I don't, I don't think I've watched a long, full movie. Good night, eight years, seven or eight years, something like that. Maybe, maybe longer than that. 
and I just can't see how somebody could just sit there. You say, well, I just got interested in it. There's so much other stuff you could get interested in. Uh, interested in something will help you. And uh, anyway, uh, uh, that old movie a long time ago, I mean, it was, Lord, it was 30 years ago, come out, uh, Mommy Dearest. Did anybody ever see that old movie, Mommy Dearest? Oh, God. Somebody told me, I bet my mom, she said, Danny, you need to watch that. And I, who, was that old, who was that old woman in that thing? What was her name? Joan Crawford? Was it Joan Crawford? How many of you have, have seen that old movie? Long, I, and I don't, all I remember is she was crazy, man. This woman was psycho. And, boy, I, she, it was, and she had these kids, and she was mean to them. Listen to me, mamas. All you mamas, listen to me. She'd take those kids, and she'd set them in a chair, and then she'd say, tell me you're sorry. Tell me you're sorry. Tell me you're never going to do it again. Tell me you're never. And just interrogate the kid. Now, that is not Bible discipline. That is not sane discipline. You can't set a kid down and interrogate. And, and, and I, you know what? I know a parent. I'm going I'm to get on a little bit touchy ground here. But I know a family where the mama set the kids down like that. And the, and the kid, uh, the, the kid's uh, a book was on there. And mama would say, tell me you dropped that book. And the kid said, mama, I didn't drop it. Tell me you dropped that book. I didn't drop it, Mom. Tell me you dropped that book. Tell me, and I mean sitting in there 15 and 20 minutes with her face right in this. Tell me you dropped that book. And he really didn't drop it. Mama, I didn't. I didn't. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You tell me you dropped it. And I had them kids tell me. They said, Brother Danny, I finally lied and said I did drop it and took my beating because she's driving me crazy. That is an insane woman. You say, well, Brother Danny, what if they lied and they really did drop it? Here's what I've done mine. You can do what you want to. Ask Carrie. Ask, ask Krista. Ask, here's what I've done them. I said, did you do this? No. You did? No. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you one last chance. You're going to tell the truth now. If I find out you're lying, and I will find out, you're going to get it. You hear me? You are going to get it. Now, I'll go easy on you if you'll just be honest. Tell them, no, I didn't do it. Didn't, okay, okay. And then I say, raise your right hand. Unto God, unto the Lord. That's what they said in the Bible. Unto the Lord. I said, now, you say unto the Lord. You didn't do it. And they'd usually break down about right there. Well, <laughs> I don't know about under the Lord. <laughs> and, you, and, and, and then I say, all right. And you say, well, what if they still lie? I say, all right, you can live with it. I can too. Just let it go. Now, you do what you want to. But I think it's wrong to get in their face. And, Tell me you did it. Tell me you did it. Tell me you're crazy and you're going to make them crazy. That's no way to talk to a child. Talk to a child. Listen. Treat them with a little. You say, I'm going to get a confession out of them if it's the last thing I ever do. That's the wrong discipline without, it must be balanced with love. Discipline must be balanced with love. They say that almost 70% of kids who run away from home are victims of some kind of physical abuse in the home. Almost two-thirds of kids that run away are some kind of victim of child abuse. Discipline, balance with love. Number three, number three, instruct kids with your words. Instruct kids with your word. If I learn one thing, I learned a lot from my mom. My mom talking about like in Deuteronomy, it said when you lie down, when you rise up, when you're at the breakfast table, when you're going to church, when they're going to school, it's the word of God, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. The word of God. Uh, they need your time uh, more than they need your money. They need your, your time more than they need stuff. You say, well, I'm going to go out here and work extra so I can buy them this. Nothing wrong with being good to them and buying them stuff. You know what they need more? Your time. Your time. Your time. Your time. Spend some time with them and instruct them. You know what mom told me? She said, Danny, now you talk to them girls. Talk to them. Talk to them. And I did. I mean, she talked to us our whole life. My mom preached to us. I mean, it was don't do this and don't do that. And mom always said, be good to people. Don't ever be mean to nobody. You know what mom told me? Mom said, you can learn to like anybody 
if you'll learn their ways. And I've never forgot that. You can't get somebody, you ever meet somebody you just don't like? Do y'all know anybody? You can nod your head. I mean, they ain't gonna care. You just, you just don't like them. I mean, and, and well, you know what you can do? You can learn to like that person if you'll learn uh, some of their behavior and maybe why they're like they are. You ever thought about that? Maybe why they are the way they are. You instruct your kids. Teach them. Teach them. You know what I told my girls and my mom told us? Here's what you tell your kids, y'all. You tell them, listen, you ain't no better than nobody else. You're no better than anybody else at school. You are no better than no, my girl with preacher's kid. You're no better than anybody else. You're no better than anybody else. You're no better than anybody else. But at the same time, you're no worse than anybody else. Right? Tell them that. Tell them that. that some kids grow up thinking, well, all the other kids at school have the pumped up kicks, you know, and all the other kids have this, and all the other kids have that, and, and they have this, and everything they wear is Under Armour, and everything they're saying, I don't want nothing to smell like Under Armour. Uh, uh, I, I don't want that, I want that, I want that. Brother, we still got the converse, amen. Uh, uh, and I'm telling you tonight, even they're back in style. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, you tell them, you ain't no better than nobody else, you're no worse than nobody else, Teach them. Don't ever take nothing that's yours. Not yours. Don't ever take nothing that's not yours. Tell them that all the time. Don't ever take nothing that's not yours. If the boy in front of you drops a quarter on the ground at school, don't pick it up and say, my lucky day. Say, hey, you dropped this. Mom said, treat people the way you want them to treat you. Treat people the way you'd hope. Listen, to help somebody the way, that's how come I help people when I see them broke down on the side of the road. You know why? I might be broke down next time and I want somebody to help me. You say, I ain't helping nobody. Okay, okay. Bad example, bad example. Instruct them with your words. Don't sit your kids down and say, I did better than that when I was in school. One day I told this kid one time, he said, uh, he said, son, when Abraham Lincoln was your age, he was a straight-A student. And his little boy looked back and said, when he's your age, he's president. <laughs> so make sure you don't set high goals and standards for your kids and you ain't much yourself, <laughs> amen? That's right, that's right, brother, amen? Don't, don't ever compare your kids. Listen, somebody help me with this. Vouch for me, kid, people. You have one kid and you raise that kid and you find out what works with it and you teach it and you train it and you teach it and you train it and you have another one come along and you try the same thing and it don't work. How I many you know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. I mean, you, it worked with the first one. What's wrong with you? And the third one's even worse. I can't tell you about four, five, and six. All I can say is you should have learned your lesson. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but... Listen, I know you think, good night. I could tell your sister that and they'd straighten right up. I tell you that and you just go crazy. Hey, you got one kid, you'll say, go over and sit down. And they'll just do this. You got another one, you say, go over and sit down. They go. <laughs> I think you was on drugs when that one was conceived. Or something, something wasn't right. <laughs> Lord in mercy. And you think, sometimes you think, are y'all kin to each other? They gotta have different parents here. Something's wrong somewhere. Listen, you, they don't, don't ever say, well, your brother, he made straight A's. What's wrong with you? I mean, they're different. They're different. You gotta learn they're different. You gotta accept that they're different. They have different talents. They have different abilities. Maybe one is smarter than the other in certain ways. Learn what's best at them. I always tell my girls, I always say, uh, 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 I would just sum up, I'd say, Carrie, Carrie's real spiritual. Y'all know that. She's got a spiritual mind. She looks at everything spiritually. That's good. That's a very good quality. Carissa, she's the smart one. That's what everybody always says. She's the one with the brains. When she was in high school, she had done her... So the teacher, math problems, the teacher couldn't work. And where she got that, uh, I don't know. But I, I, math never was my thing, I can tell you that. Uh, but she's smart. And then Corey's always been a 
philosopher. She looks at it like a philosopher. I'm not kidding you. Uh, she come up with some of those philosophical sayings you ever heard in your life. And that, that don't mean that the other one don't have any, that don't mean their other two's dumb. Uh, that don't mean the other two not spirit. That don't mean that. That means they all, find out what your kid excels in and pull that out of them. If they're musically inclined, like Malachi here, let them learn how to play the instruments. If they're physically, like if, if they can ride a motorcycle like Daxtifer and, 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 and win a lot of money and buy, build us a building right over there, Hallelujah. I'm just kidding. Uh, if Learn what they're good at and help them to use it and use it for the Lord. In other words, you can't make... Peter said, well, now his brother played the guitar in front of him and he ought to play the, He may not have it in him to play no guitar. He may not have it in him to be a basketball. I know people who force their kids into sports and brother, they just ain't into it. They just ain't into it. They ain't made for it. They don't like it. They don't enjoy it. And have enough sense. Don't, mamas, don't try to live your life that you messed up through your daughter. You know what I'm to say? Well, I'm going to try to get her to do what I didn't get to do. And I know a lot of women who try to live their life through their daughter and push them to date and everything. God, I've heard women, I mean, their girls 14, 15 say, boy, go get, look at him, he's cute. Look at, you, you, you need a room in Broughton if you think like that. I mean, there's something wrong with you, lady. Don't, Lord, she's going to like them soon enough. Leave them alone. Instruct them with your words. Number four. Number four, we'll hurry. Use the rod of correction when necessary. This is completely against society today. This is completely against the grain. Actually, I think it's when we were, uh, I was in West Virginia, Kentucky or somewhere. Might be in West Kentucky. Like there are still some uh, public schools there where they, where they use corporal punishment. They still spank kids. And it's okayed by the parents ruled through the school and everything like it used to be. That's great. That's great. It's too late for our public schools in, in most places. too late. That'll never happen again. But you as a parent, let me give you what the Bible says. I know so-and-so's a Christian and they wrote a book and they said there's other ways. I know they say put the nose in a corner. There's nothing in the Bible that said put a nose. I think I think putting your nose in the corner is cruel and unusual punishment. I, honestly, I mean, if you do it, that's between you and the Lord. To me, that's just weird. That's just weird. I mean, I sit there and stare at, well, that's a little mummy dearest to me. Uh, I, you, I, I'm just giving you my heart tonight. If you do it, between you and God and the Lord. Uh, and, and if you, I think, I think making your son pick up a pile of rocks and move them over there and then pick them back up and move them over there is weird punishment. I don't think that accomplishes anything. You know, people, just to show how big and tough you are and that you can be hard on them. I don't think you should fuss and holler at your son when he don't do good in his ball games. I know, I know boys in high school that wished their daddy never even came to the game because he stood there, what's wrong with you? What, look at you. You blind, you struck out again. Uh, and the poor kid's so nervous he couldn't hit the ball if it was that big around. And, and listen, I don't think you ought to do that. Uh, you, use, you use a rod of correction when necessary. Let's look at, listen to what the Bible says. Evidently, some of you people need to be reminded of this. Proverbs 13, 24. There's nothing in the Bible about time out. There's nothing in the Bible about nose in the corner. There's nothing in the Bible about sending them to bed without supper. There's nothing in the Bible. If you do that, that's between you and the Lord, and it might be all right sometimes. But let's see what the Bible said. Proverbs 13, 24, he that spareth his rod. What's that? Like that right there. A rod, a hickory switch, hateth his son. But he that loveth him, chasteneth him, be time. You'll never get respect out of that kid unless you spank it sometime or another. I've had people tell me, Kim, I've never had a spanking. I say, well, I can tell it too. I can tell it. Hey, Proverbs 20 and verse 30. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil. So do stripes the inward parts of the belly. Do you realize how bad that sounds nowadays? Stripes. But that's not child abuse. Don't you dare misinterpret what I just said. You know what my mom said? She'd say, if that was my young'un, I'd strap them little legs. 
That's what she'd say. That's what the old people, have you ever heard the old folks say that? Now, that don't mean hurt them. That, that's not a, that means taking a little hickory and like that. They'll straighten up. I've had people tell me, they say, well, I whip my kid and don't do a bit of good. You ain't never whipped them right. Now, I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Let me just finish what the Bible said. You claim to believe the Bible? You want your kids to grow up treating people with respect? Here you go. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go when he's old and not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Like, if you don't sit down, I'm going to spank you. If you don't sit down, I'm going to spank you. If you don't sit down, I'm going to spank you. If you don't sit down, I'm going to spank you. Come here. Honest, you'd be better off just not even say nothing than to do that. That don't do a bit of good. You're not even supposed to spank a kid with your hand. Your hand should be a symbol of love. Mama's hand. You know, mama's, you shouldn't go like that when mama raised her hand. <laughs> you say, mama's, <laughs> won't smack you, boy. Uh, back in. That, that shouldn't be, it should be the rod. Fear the rod, not the hand. You know what my mom did? She took something about like that right there and she laid it on top of the refrigerator. Now, somebody tell me why she laid it on top of the refrigerator. That's right, the little devil will go in there and get it and hide it. And she put it. So she said, boy, you know what's on top of that refrigerator, don't you? You know that? Oh, it's up there. And if you don't behave, I'll go in there and get that off the top of the refrigerator. And they, you know what they're scared of? They're not scared of your hand. They're scared of that rod. They're scared of that rod. The rod of correction will drive it far. From, listen, when I went to school, they, they spanked us, buddy. I mean, there's no two ways about it. I mean, I got in trouble one time. I got sent to the principal's office. I was about in the ninth grade. Oh, boy. Mr. Gilbert Bird was our, our principal. And Mr. Bird, we were scared to death of him. And he, went, and he had on a suit and a tie. He, I mean, he meant business. He looked at me. He said, Dan. Call me Dan. I thought, how disrespectful. <laughs> and, but I didn't say nothing. I said, yes, sir. He said, Dan. You did this. I was scared to death. He said, I want you to stand up right there and bend over. I stood there and bend over. I did not say, you better not touch me. I'll call my lawyer. <laughs> we didn't, there wasn't no such thing as that. If you'd have called a lawyer then, they'd have said, you shouldn't have got yourself in that mess. Bend over. Right. It wasn't no like, I'll call my mama and she'll come down here and we'll sue you. There wasn't no such thing as that right there. I bent over. As a matter of fact, I said, look, please don't come my mom. <laughs> right? Ain't that what y'all did? Because you know you was in trouble when you got home. Mama's had enough sense then to take the side of the school teacher, not the side of the kid. Don't take the side of the kid against the teacher. Listen, 90, you say, well, the teacher's not always right. 99% of the time they are. Even, even, even teachers, I've noticed unsaved teachers in schools are 99% right in their disciplinary It's And the kids say, but mama, she, they can twist it around and tell their side of the story without really lying to make it all look like they're innocent and they didn't do nothing. Son, Mr. Bird, he pulled out something that looked like that right there, from there to there. So it had holes in it. Whip me with a guitar, brother. <laughs> Child abuse. He said, Dan, I went like that. I thought, man, put this book in there. And I thought, that ain't going to work. Look like SpongeBob SquarePants. And he, I put that down like that. He rears back like that and goes, wow. I'm not kidding you, brother. It'll lift you up. I, I'm just, he rears back like that and goes, wow. wow. Did, did I cry? Nope, never cried. Let's see, look at I wasn't there going to cry. I, I would not cry. I never cried the whole time I was uh, growing up till I got saved. No, I never cried in school or nothing. I wasn't going to let them see me cry. I got shot. I didn't cry. I, I, had, uh, I, I had bicycle wrecks. I didn't cry. And man, he hit me, and I went back to, to my class. And here's the way I sat for about two hours. They said, it hurt? Nah. It didn't hurt me. It felt like I was on fire. 
I'm telling you, I thought he beat us a hole in my britches. Have you ever had that happen to you? Raise your hand. Now, you know what? You do that now, and they'll put you in jail. Listen, biblical discipline is not child abuse. Now, now, now listen to me. If you're mad, and you take out your temper on your kid, and you hit them when you're mad and stuff, that ain't right. If you hurt them, that's not right. If you, if you hit them anywhere other than the place God hath prepared with padding. <laughs> Although I had a teacher, we had this one teacher. She took, uh, she used to take, anybody ever had this? She used to take a ruler uh, uh, and, and hold your hand like that right there. And pop, anybody had that done to them? Raise your hand. Man, I'm telling you, that, that don't sound bad. Buddy, it, it'll, it'll pop. Uh, they, your whole hand will be red right there. Pop, 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 pop. One time this boy was sitting behind me. I was about in third grade, and we, was having, we had clay. And, and he reached up, this idiot reached up and cut my ear. I don't know if I still got a scar there. He took scissors and cut my ear. And it was bleeding down the line. I was like, what's wrong with you, you nut? And, and, the teacher, and then the teacher got him, and, they, and they'd hold your hand like that right there. Hold it real tight. And take that rule and go, pow, pow, pow. And boy, they'd be jerking. Hold on. They wouldn't let you jerk away. You'd hold, they'd hold you like this. Now, this will go on the inter- internet, and people will say, oh, you're teaching child abuse. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I believe the Bible, and I believe discipline in love, according to the Bible, still will work. Not being mean, not being ugly, not being brutal, not hurting nobody, just correcting them. If you say you don't believe in discipline a child, you're saying God is a bad father because he disciplines his kids. He chastens us when we do wrong. The Lord's took me to the woodshed a time or two. Proverbs 29 and verse 15. Correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Proverbs 23, 13. Withhold not correction from the child. Listen to this. I'm reading you the Bible. Thou shalt beat him with a rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. It's not talking about hurting him. It's not talking, when we say beat, we're talking about hurting somebody. It's not talking about that, a, a, a spanking. Use the rod of correction when necessary. When we were little, some of you probably had to go out and get your own torture weapon. Anybody ever had to do that? All right, I see a bunch. Mom say, you go out there and break me a limb off that apple tree, buddy, I'm going to beat the devil out of you. I said if one little boy one time said, his mama told him, he said, you go out there and break me a limb off that, off that bush and I'm going to beat you half to death. And he went out there and he stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed and everybody come back in. And every, finally he come back in and he goes, <laughs> she said, where's that limb at? And he said, I couldn't find one, but here's a walk you can throw at me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they'll do that to you sometimes. They'll do that to you sometimes, man. They'll, Don't let them make you feel sorry for them. Kids are funny. They said one time, this ain't in the message, but said the kid, one time they said, uh, all right, kids, does anybody know who, who Aaron was in the Bible? Put his name up on the board. Little kid said, no, I don't, but I bet he was the first one in the phone book. <laughs> That's pretty good, ain't it? The other kid said, uh, Mom, uh, their Papa died, and the kid come in there about a week later, they hadn't got his stuff out. I said, Mama, Mama, this is awful. Up Grandpa's glasses. He can't see a thing up there in heaven. <laughs> kids think like that, and you got to remember they're kids. Quickly, I'll 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 hurry. Here's one for y'all, the parents. Number five. This is very important. The will of the parent must prevail over the will of the child. They're like a horse yet that ain't been broke. If you don't break them, they're going to run your life, your whole life. Well, I just can't do nothing with them. I just can't. And it'll be that way when they're 12 and 13, 14, 15. If you don't break that will, the will of the parent, here's what most people do. If you'll just shut up, yes, go get all the ice cream you want. Pepsi won't just leave me alone because I want to watch this. That's what most people do. 
Most people, instead of spending time and breaking the child's will and having talking to the child and doing, just say, okay, tear the house down. I don't care. Just hush. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. The will of the parent must prevail over the will of the child. The child must, listen, the child must know who's boss. They got to know who's boss. I've had people tell me, I've had people tell me for years. They say, well, we can't do bus route anymore more because of my kid. We can't do this no more because of my kid. Listen, I'm not going to let no kid dictate to me where I can go and where I can't go and what I can do. And where I, can. I understand there are some things you can't do. I got it. I get that. And I, believe, I agree with that. But you cannot let a child dictate your whole life. Bro, well, I'm not going to let a kid run the household. Nobody. Yours, mine, they're, these, none of them. They're not, and, and Kelly's the same way. Kelly, she does real good. She puts up Bible verses and, and she, puts, she puts one on that once in a while. I think it's on there now, ain't it? I'll go down there once in a while and there'll be a, a, a paper like this and it's taped on the front of the TV and says, let's leave the TV off for a while. And it'll just stay there two or three days. I don't know what provoked that or what caused it or they was watching too much or what, but I just walk in once in a while. I don't ever turn that TV on anyway. Uh, I watch one in the bedroom from watching watch the news or whatever. And, and it says, let's leave the TV off for a while. That's good. Your kids shouldn't just come in and say, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch this and be addicted to this. The first thing they do when they come in that door, turn that TV on, and games the same way. Games are probably as bad or worse. We're going to have the healthiest thumbs in the history of the world. I mean, they, they, they couldn't lift, they couldn't weed eat, couldn't push a lumber, but brother, their thumbs are so healthy. Lord, they got the best thumbs that's ever been in the history of planet Earth. And I'm telling you, brother, she, she puts Bible verses up. She's got a verse on the, on the refrigerator. And also it says, be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. That's a good verse to put on your refrigerator. When they start fussing, be ye kind. One to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. The will of the parent must prevail over the will of the child. Number six, this will be quick because I don't usually preach this long. Y'all probably needed this, I reckon. Ain't my fault. Number six, when you say it, mean it. Don't let them figure out she don't mean that. She ain't gonna do nothing. Mom said, "Oh right, boy, if you do that again, I'm gonna get." She don't mean that. She says that all the time. If you ain't gonna stick by it, don't say it. Good or bad. See, a lot of times when a preacher says that, we think if you tell them, "Boy, when I get you home, you're gonna get it." And all the way home, he's thinking, ah, Daddy's going to forget. He'll forget. He'll forget. And sometimes when you get home, there you go. Come on, Frankie. Now's the time to cry, buddy. You help yourself. I'd ten times rather do it now. Good boy. Good boy. Cry. Laugh. Play. Um, kid says, what was I talking about before he interrupted me? You don't even know, do you? Oh, yeah. Dad says, you're going to get whipped until you get home. Daddy says, by the time I get home, she says, well, uh, you told me you're going to get it with me. He says, nah, I let it go. I don't want to ruin the evening and everything. And the kid says, hmm, I got away with that, didn't I? And then the next time, if you say you're going to do it, do it. And by the way, that means good stuff too. If you say we're going to go get an ice cream, take them and get an ice cream. I don't care if it's inconvenient. I don't care if you get home. Listen, if you... Listen, Marty Becker, I ain't never in my life seen a kid with such a memory. If she, you ever tell her you're going to do something for her, buddy, I'm telling you, Lord have mercy. She could put, if she could apply that to learning the Bible, she'd know the whole Bible by heart. If you're going down a road from here to South Carolina and go around a certain curve and say, we're going to get an ice cream in a little bit. Two years later, if you pass that same curve, she, we going to get an ice cream again? I mean, they don't forget it. You tell them you're going to get candy, you're going to get ice cream, we're going to get pizza tonight, we're going to have popcorn, you're going to get to do this. Don't get home and say, I changed my mind. If, when you say it, mean it. Good or bad. Last, I'm done. I should add to that. 
Don't always let him have his way, but let him have his say. It's all right to ask them, what do you think? You know what I used to do with my girls? I'd get in trouble and I'd say, you're not going to do that. And they'd say, Daddy, you're being too... I'd say, all right, what would you do if, 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 if your kid did this? If you was the daddy and your kid did the same thing, what would you do? Let them, let them tell you. Number seven, I'm done. Keep your kids in church. Keep your kids in church. If I say it a thousand times, keep them in church, y'all. Keep them in church. When it's hard, when it's inconvenient, when it's Sunday night, when it's Wednesday night, when it's camp meet, keep your kids in church. Ladies and gentlemen, they, they, they're out there in the world all week long. Some of them only get one hour of church a week, and that ain't enough. 11 to 12, one hour a week, and there's 168 or whatever hours in a week. They don't, they don't get enough. Keep them in church. Keep them in church. You say, well, they come home and they're tired and they got homework and, and they ain't had a bad night. Listen, get them in church. Get them in church. Get them in church. If you feel bad, come on anyway. Let your kids grow up saying, we're going to church. It's Sunday. We're going to church. It don't matter. It don't matter if it's rain. It don't matter if it's 4th of July. It don't matter if it's Christmas. It don't matter if it's pretty weather. It don't matter if it's Mamaw's birthday. We're going to church. Listen, it's something every week, people. You can go to somebody birthday party or go to the mountains or go to the beach or go to the mountains and go to the waterfalls and go to uh, have a picnic every Sunday. You've got to make up your mind and get your priorities right. My kids are going to church on Sunday. That's it. They need it. They need it. They should never, ever, ever get up on Sunday and say, are we going to church today? Never. You say, it's Sunday, ain't it? Yeah, we're gone. What about Mamaw's birthday party? We'll go after church. What about, what about that rain coming? We ain't going to drown. We're going to church. Keep your kids in church. The best chance you got of your kids turning out right is to let them hear the same thing at church, home, and school. And to that, they'd have to be in a Christian school. If they're in public school, you hear them at a good church and give them everything you can at home. And I'm telling you, you get them in youth camp, you get them in youth meetings where God moves and kids start getting saved, and that's the best chance you got. All right? Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Come on, Miss Desi, and play something tonight. Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. We're not going to sing. Just going to have a little music here tonight. And I, I want to know who in here tonight would just say, Preacher, I need, I need help. I want to be a better parent. I want to be the right kind of parent. It's just getting this all or night. Something's already coming. Slide out of your seat. Come down here and say, Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me to be what you want me to be. Help me, Lord Jesus, to be the mama, to be the daddy that you want me to be. Amen. We're just going to pray a few minutes tonight. Join me here on this altar tonight. Others. Maybe you don't even have kids, but you're going to one of these days. Ask God to help you to be the right kind of parent. Nobody's perfect. I sure ain't. I sure made a lot of mistakes. And my kids know I did. And I told them to. And I told them I was sorry. But I did make a mistake. I hope that you'll do that tonight. Amen. We're praying. We're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray. Getting ready to pray. Christians are praying tonight. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you tonight, we ask you that you forgive us of all of our sin, everything we've done, everything we've, we've failed you so many times. I failed you so much as a daddy. I failed my girls so many times. Lord, forgive me. Help my mistakes uh, not to be stumbling stones to them, but stepping stones that they could live for you and serve you. Oh, God, 
do what ought to be done in every life here tonight. I pray, Father, that you'd bless every single person on this altar. I pray the Holy Ghost of God will come down and move in every life, move in every heart, help every family here do the right thing. We'll thank you and praise you for it all. We love you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Lord, bless tonight. Amen. 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 All right. All right. My heart's clear. Mention a couple things right quick before we go. Um, uh, we need a little help, y'all. Uh, when we got so, so many people gone and working and stuff, uh, uh, we need help in the bus ministry. We need a couple of men, if you will, to get CDL license. I mentioned this before. Uh, we need some little help because sometimes we'll come up with two drivers gone this morning and come up short. And also, we need some helpers in junior church. 